Welcome to Victory Church Craddock. Yeah, thank you so much for being here tonight. I have to say, if I had a list of the people coming tonight, I probably would have said no. <laughs> so, yeah, well, thanks for being here. And, um, yeah, I'm so excited that the Lord did something this morning just to, like, um, yeah, build me up. And, and if, we, if I don't believe that we serve a, li- a living God after this morning, yeah, I don't know, and I probably never will. Um, yeah, so just quickly, my heart is really that I can reflect the Lord in a way that it shines His light. Because I know everywhere he li- His light touches, lives are changed. Um, yeah, and then I always told myself, if I ever take this opportunity, I would just really like to honor Will and Jeannie. You know, I'm standing here today because of the Lord first, and secondly, because of your yes. If it, if it went for your yes, I probably would have still been the guy at the back of the church, standing with my hands in my pocket, never lifting my hands, never being able you know, just to share how good our Father is. So thank you for that. Okay. Um, so just quickly, um, I was only to, so I've got a, um, a helping hand at the back. Thank you, my wife. Just like, so I asked her to keep it so I can just tell the story, my topic. Now, I think Will asked me about three weeks, four weeks ago, that I would like the opportunity to preach. And obviously I thought about it and I decided, yes, I'm going to do it. And then I went straight into topic mode. What do I need to say? What do I need to preach about? And um, coming from GCG, I felt like the Lord has really changed my identity, so maybe I should talk about that. And then I was like, no, not that. And then the Lord clearly told me I have to talk about original design. I was like, what does this mean? Now, if you were here this morning, you'd know I'm in a bit of a predicament. Because what can I say after this morning? Um, Anyway, so I started with this and and I was like, I need to say this, um, or I need to speak about this. And two weeks ago when Jeannie preached, she basically said about 70% of what I wanted to say. I got home, I told Andy, I don't know what I'm going to say. And that Monday, Rian told me that he thought that's confirmation of the message that I need to bring, so I stuck with it. And then, like yesterday, because I'm still farming, so every morning I'm in the Word and at night, and yesterday I took like four hours, like I'm going to settle this now. And while I was in my office, so I, my office like overlooks a dam, and I saw this fish eagle going down into the water, and obviously it's a bit far, so I can't see what he's doing, but it looked like he struggled, and then he took off and he went and sat on the side of the dam and then he flew again and I have camera so I zoomed in on this eagle I'm like what is he doing and I saw he had the fish and this morning when I got here I saw William and I'm like I'm kind of feeling like that eagle eh? he's caught this big fish and he doesn't know what to do with it and William in all his wisdom said you know that the reason he couldn't take up wasn't because the fish was so big it's because there wasn't wind underneath his wings so that he needs wind underneath his wings. And he encouraged me and said that I should trust the Holy Spirit to build me up. And then Tani Karina brought this message, and I, I know you're probably not going to believe me, but I promise you word for word, verse for verse, it was the same message that the Lord has been putting on my heart for the last month. And, yeah, so God just showed me that He's been the same God all the years, he's been there all the time. Yeah, and it is for us. So with that, my topic, original design. Now where did this start? In 2022, Anne and I were blessed with a little girl. I know you've probably seen her around. And I love her, like, I can't explain my love for her. So I had this question, like, how am I going to protect her? How am I going to keep Lily safe? from the world and the suffering that I endured. Can I like wrap her up in something and store her away and like, bring her out? And, and I quickly realized like, that's not possible. Eh? You can't 
protect your children like forever. So that led to these questions. How can I protect Lily from a world and some of the pain I experience? If I knew God as a child, why did I still get hurt? And why did I still sin? If I love Lily so much, how much does he love me? And I need to explain this to you, so sorry if this is a bit gruesome, but like I always say I love my wife like a lot. And if someone were to come into our living room with an intent to hurt her, there'll be blood against the walls. Like I'll fight for my life. But if Lily was in the room, you'll see me leaping over chairs. I'm going for organs. I'm going to tear you apart. And, and I was like, you don't touch Lily. And then just now in worship, the Lord actually showed me the difference between our love and His love is that I would sacrifice my life. But He basically sacrificed Lily. And having that revelation of how much He loved me made me realize that His love for me is unconditional. And how can I love Him unconditionally? If God created me, what was my origin, original design and how did I miss it? Now, I might be the only guy in church that does this. So if it resonates with you, great. Um, if we get something at our house, like we order something and it needs to be put together, I'm like, and this recently happened with a swimming pool, so this is a great example. We ordered it online. It got there like one afternoon. It was very hot. And I got there and I saw the swimming pool and Ali was, can you quickly put it up? And I'm like, yes, I have 10 minutes. Okay, maybe I'll quickly do it. And I was like, okay, how hot can it be? You throw it out there, there's pipes and there's like a soul. And okay, half an hour later, Ali walks by. She's like floating like this. She checks the box, goes inside. She says, takes the manual. She says, did you read the manual? Now, at school, we talked about humble pie. Now, humble pie is the lacony. So I had to eat some humble pie, and this made me realize that we tend to live life with this motto. If all else fails, read the manual. And we carry that into our biblical well life as well as we go to our parents, our spouse, our friends, our mentors. I actually remember this about William. We were here when William had his first preacher. The stage was still there. And William testified, and, and I was like, yes, this guy, he's lived a life. And now he's like going to whatever he's been called for. I'm going to ask him for like worldly wisdom. I'm going to ask him, where should I put my money? What work should I do? Should I go back to QS or should I still be farming? And every time I go to William, William is just like Jesus. I'm like, William, I don't need Jesus now. I need Sanlam, PSG or Discovery. So, well, thanks for that. Um, I read this quote, when you think about your life and what you va value, what would you put first? When you read God's word, are you doing so out of duty or out of desire to delight in your Savior? When all we give Jesus is our leftovers, fear overwhelms us, our, our peace and our worry clouds our vision. Now in John 1 verse 1, it says, In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through Him all things were made. Without Him nothing was made. That has been made. In Him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not been overcome. Has overcome. So, I believe that we should go to Scripture to find our original design and step into our calling. Now, this is actually... The scripture that I got that I should be preaching on, and if you were here this morning, you will see that we were in a life with Tani Karina and Stefan, and every time we left there, and then I was like, "Sorry, Tani Karina, I cannot Bible." So I was like, "How am I gonna? How am I gonna? I'm standing on the shoulders of giants here." So in Genesis 1, verse 26 to 27, it says, "Then God said, Let us make mankind in our own image." in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all wild animals, and over all creatures that move along the ground. So God created mankind in his own image. 
in the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. To amplify it, said, it's so nice for me. Then God said, let us, let us, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, make man in our image, according to our likeness, not physical, but a spiritual personality, a moral likeness. And let them complete authority over the fish in the sea, the birds of the air, the cattle, and over the entire earth, and over everything that creeps and crawls. Now, God created me in His likeness. And why did I miss it? Why did I, like, go through the valleys? And I, I asked God this question, like, this is in my heart, so I need to understand it. And then he showed me these lies. God is only good to others. You're not that bad. And the world has more to offer. So firstly, God is only good to others. How do, how do we see our, how do we see or what do we believe about God? Having a revelation of who God is, is very important. So, I don't know exactly how long ago Will was preaching and I remember I was sitting at the back and I don't know exactly what Will said but something prompted in me and the Lord showed me a vow that I made and this ties in with what Jeannie said two weeks ago that so I grew up on a farm and I, I loved it every part of it, it was just great and my father was diagnosed with cancer when I was about four and when I was about 11, he just felt that he's not going to make it and he needed to sell the farm. So the day they told us, is they took us to a place on the farm that we love to go to. And while we were sitting there, they broke the news they're going to sell the farm. Sorry, I, I don't want to cry. I, I don't gangster cry like William. William only sheds a tear. I'm like, I go, all my emotions show in my face. Like I go red. Um, yeah, I do two things with my emotions. I show them when I cry and I eat them. I'm like, <laughs> I enjoy eating. Um, so in that moment, I just was like, as an 11-year-old boy, if God is good, why would he let this happen? How can a good God let the enemy take this farm from us? And I, on that, on that spot, just vowed that I would never trust God again. That that I would work to get what I want and that I would be my own provider and that I would never trust anything else but myself. So this vow made that I never saw God as good. And the problem with not having a a revelation of who God is and what His nature is is that we can't give something or anything to someone else. In Acts 3, verse 1 to 7, it says, One day Peter and John were going up to the temple at the time of prayer at 3 in the afternoon. Now a man who was lame from birth was being carried to the temple gate, where he was put every day to beg from those going into the temple courts. When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for money. Peter looked straight at him as the John. Then Peter said, Look at us. So the man gave him, them his attention, expecting to get something from them. Then Peter said, silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have I give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. Taking him by the right hand, he helped him up, and instantly the man's ankles became strong. He jumped on to his feet and began to walk. Then he went with them into the temple courts, walking and jumping and praising God. And I always read this part and I was like, Yes, Peter is a cheapskate. Eh? How, how is it possible that this man of God can't like have a five rand somewhere in his pockets? Like, if I go to Spar and there's a car and it's Munir, I suka five rand, sorry, I get near. And I know like there's a two rand there somewhere that got lost. And I was like, wouldn't that be just easier to give five cents than to go and pray for him and put yourself out there and hoping that he would walk? And you see, the thing is, Peter had a revelation. He knew God, and he knew God's nature, and he knew that if he gave this lame man God, if he gave him Jesus, that God would restore his original design, and that he would be able to walk. So that is important. The way that we view God 
and these attributes. So I listed only a few, but you can go into the word. There's so many good attributes of God. God is good. God is love. God is holy. God is righteous. We need to understand that we were made in His likeness, and, and His nature is good. While we love showing love to others, the love that we have is by His nature, because He is love. And yeah, I just had so much revelation about the limitations that we as earthly people put on to God because of lack of revelation of His divine nature. That leads me to my second lie. You're not that bad. Now, when I was at varsity, like, I don't like to speak about the first six months because I was like on a road to destruction. I was going. And then somehow, by the middle of my first year, I was like, this road, I'm going to physically die in three months. So I need to change my ways. And I, and I was blessed to have friends that really love Jesus. And they were like on fire. I think they went to church five times on a Sunday. Like they were like, and, and I was, yes, I just loved being around them and, and, and how, to see how they loved God. And, and then I was, and now you need to remember, I still carried this vow that God isn't good for me, but He's good to others. So I saw them reading their Bibles, and I read my Bible, and I read Galatians 5, verse 22 to 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness and self-control and you know what I did I was like this is it I wrote it down stick it above my bed and I decided I'm going to read this every day twice a day and this is who I'll be now what did I miss you go to Galatians 5 verse 19 to 21 the acts of the flesh are obvious sexual immorality impurity idolatry and witchcraft hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambitions, factions and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. I tell you what I missed. I missed the whole point. The point is that these fruits are a byproduct of relationship with Him. I can't work for them. I can't created in my own I need to have relationship with, with God having known his nature and that would be the byproducts you see we're always fighting against the flesh because we're not laying it down so living with this belief it created religion in me and I always say I was a comparison not a Christian you see I lived in comparison of people I believe was more sinful than me. Always thinking, I'll just, I'll be all right. I'm okay. And on the other hand, looking at people that I felt that are calling over their life, and I was like, oh, lucky you. God is good to you, but not to me. And in that place, I never stepped into my calling. I never stepped into original design because I did not understand who he was. And that brings me to the third lie. The world has more to offer. Now remember, I work for everything I have. To this point, at this point, I played rugby for the Free State, and I did well in my studies, and I was like, yes, I did well, eh? And I, I, I sinned a bit, but I was okay. Um, yeah, and so with this wrong belief, a lot of pride stirred up in me. You know what pride does? Pride makes you blind for your sins. And, um, you yeah, every Sunday I thought, I'll be fine if I just go to church every Sunday. I'll be fine if I try to put a lid on my sin. And I never got to the heart of the Father. You see, if you live like this with, I'll be fine, you never get to God's timeline. You make a lot of mistakes because God's timeline isn't ours. God's timeline is eternal. We run after promotions, the next big paycheck, the next big um, whatever we feel the Lord is granting us with. 
while we have blurred vision of what he's actually calling us into. So, living like that, I realize that I have built up a lot of idols in my life. You see, God is good and everything he created is good. The problem is when we look past whatever he created and not to past the creator to what he created. If we don't put God at the top, but we worship stuff like our jobs, money, and we don't use it to edify him. And in GCG I shared this. How to identify idols in your life. The thing I look to for identity. Something outside of Christ you point to to describe you. This is how I identify myself. This gives me a feeling of value. The thing I look to for satisfaction. Trusting in something else for your satisfaction. You believe that you get more, of, if you get more of it, you will be satisfied. For example, money, power, or influence. You will make all kinds of sacrifices for it. Sacrifice your marriage for your career or success. You can't imagine living without it. And this was a tough one. You would fall apart if you lost it. If you lost it, how would you respond? Yeah, this speaks directly to my life for Lily. And I had to, to ask the Lord, show me, how can I love him more than I love Lily? Okay, I want to finish with this. Matthew 7, verse 21 to 27. I'm going to read from verse 24. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who builds his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against the house. Yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine does not put them into practice. is like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. The rain came, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against the house, and it fell with a great crash. I always read the scripture, and, and I have a bit of a curious background. I'm like... I don't think I'll build a house on sand, also not on rock. Just, you know, it's just too much work. And, and uh, you know, the problem was that I never had insight to what Jesus was actually saying here. You know, the constant here is the storm. And the difference is that the one house was built in a rock. And knowing how I would go about building a house on a rock, it means I'll have to spend time with that rock. You'll have to drill into it to see if it's a proper rock. You'll have to walk about it to see where, you, where your challenges lie. And lastly, you'll have to trust it. And we can't trust in God if we don't understand His nature. A couple of weeks ago, we were visiting and his parents and um, for some reason I like to look at property 24 I think sometimes I think I have a lot of money and then I just I like scroll and uh, yes, this farm is nice and this is nice and, and that day at the house I'm, I'm, scro- I, I'm actually I search for net I want to see the prices you know what's the first form that comes up it's that form And I, yes, I, so this is my place, and I'm instantly, I need to have it. And I'm making plans. I'm going to phone this guy, he's got a lot of money, and I'm going to do this. And I'm, I've got this one plan that's not that legal, but maybe it's all right. And I, but I, I'm going to have this form. And like in an instant, the Lord just says to me, like, what are you doing? This isn't you. And I'm like, I'm, I'm like I've dealt with this, then why is this a problem? And clearly God said to me, this was your first love. So I want to challenge you with this today. If you want to step into your original design, step into your purpose, ask God to show you your first love. Thank you.